Okay, in this video, I am going to show you how to set up a static IP address in Windows 10. Okay, so what we're assuming initially is that you are already successfully on a network and you've got a dynamic IP address, but you would like to make that IP address static. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to right click on the start button and we're going to go to run. And in the run window, just type CMD and click OK, and you'll get your little command window here. And you're going to go IP config, all one word, space, forward slash, that's the one below the question mark, at least on a US keyboard, and all. all right, and that's going to give you a whole bunch of information, uh, which you may need to scroll up until you find, uh, in my case, it's the Ethernet Zero adapter, okay? And we have here our IP version 4 address, 192.168.0.15. That's the dynamic one that I currently have. I want to make that a static IP address. And the reason we typed in all is that we're going to get all this other information like the DNS servers, etc. So, um, you can grab the title bar, you know, click on the uh, white area here, and pull this up to the upper left-hand corner of your screen. And you'll see why in a second, because right now we're going to do start the next step, which is right-clicking, and we're going to go to Network Connections. Okay, and we want to bring this down here. You know, uh, grab the title bar again and uh, move it so that the bottom right hand corner is in the bottom right hand corner of the screen here and then we're going to grab the top left corner and essentially we're going to move this window out of the way of the information that we want to read. It's just going to make things a whole lot easier as we go along. So again here's the Ethernet connection that we're going to be modifying. Uh, it, see this one the Bluetooth says not connected this one says network so uh, likely on your system it'll say the same thing if you're successfully connected it'll say network underneath the adapter name that way you'll know it's the right one all right so we're going to right click on that adapter and we're going to go to properties we'll wait for the property window to come up here we go Okay, so in the property window, we're looking for this Internet Protocol version 4, TCP slash IP version 4. That's where we're going to uh, click so that we have that highlighted. And then we're going to click on the Properties button in the middle here uh, to the right-hand side. And this will give us our uh, IP version 4 properties window. And this is where we're going to put in our specific IP address, etc. So let's uh, click use the following IP address, which automatically puts use the following DNS server addresses, uh, makes that selected as well. And uh, let's check, check off validate settings upon exit. Uh, that could be useful. So now IP address currently is the 192, etc. 15. So randomly at this point, I'm going to say I want my static IP address to be .200. That way, the router can assign the lower values automatically. Uh, it's never likely to get to 200 and uh, accidentally assign uh, the same IP address as my static machine here. So let's go ahead and put 192.168.1.15. Oh, sorry, it's dot zero in this case, dot zero, and click over here, 200. And when we click on subnet mask, that gets filled in automatically for us. We can confirm that it's the same as uh, in our command window. Okay. Now, default gateway, we're going to look over in our command window. It tells us exactly what that is. So, 192.168.0.15. You can hit the space bar to move over to the next one if you're not typing. When you type 3, it moves over 
three numbers it moves over automatically but otherwise you can hit the spacebar click there with your mouse dot one that's our gateway so we want our dns servers uh, generally to match um, As an alternative, uh, you can also use the open DNS, DNS servers. Okay, I'm gonna put those in just so that you have uh, that option and are aware of it. Now, open DNS, you can go uh, to their website and find out about them. Uh, what I find, the, the service that I'm on, their DNS isn't always uh, on point, as it were. Sometimes certain sites that I know otherwise are working elsewhere around the world. Uh, their DNS gets corrupted and you just can't get there uh, using their DNS servers. I have not had that issue with the open DNS servers. So I'm going to go ahead and use those values. So it's 208.67 and then I can hit space 222, 222. That's the first one. Okay, and then starts off the same 208.67 and 220, 220. Okay, now otherwise I could have used the existing 6459160.14 over here and the and its matching cousin there. But um, the the open DNS uh, service I f have found is great. So what do I can go ahead and click OK and then click close and it's doing that authentication thing, detecting if there are any problems. Okay, so it says it couldn't identify the problem, but that's really to say it couldn't identify any problem because we shouldn't have problems at this point. So we'll go ahead and close that. And then we can confirm that we're still online by jumping into edge here. getting our little welcome screen. This is the first time I've opened the Edge browser. Let's click on the Start tab here and just do a random search. There we go. Searched for horses. Horses came up. We know that our network settings are fine. All right. Uh, go ahead. Always close tabs. Sure. All right. So it's that simple. Uh, just make sure that you're matching uh, your info correctly, you know, a, a little typo is a big error in a case like this. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.